himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sin we might live for righteousness. The Spirit of God helps us in our weakness, interceding with sighs too deep for words. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. 
We confess that in our own days of death and uncertainty, as we ourselves remain captive to doubt and fear, help us to not overlook those who are the most vulnerable, the poor, the hungry, and those that mourn the loss of loved ones. Call us not to be deaf to the cries of this world and indifferent to calls for peace and justice. Forgive us, God of mercy. Help us to trust in your power to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the joy of life abundant again, given in Christ Jesus, the risen Lord. Amen. Remember God's promise. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Living God, with joy, we celebrate the presence of your risen word. Enliven now our weary hearts this Easter by the power of your Holy Spirit, so that we may proclaim the good news of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Listen for the word of the Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This ends the reading of God's holy word on this Easter Sunday. May those who are gathered say thanks be to God. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. I want to thank the MacArthur family for being with us today and, and celebrating this wonderful day of resurrection and the gifts that they bring to our service today in music. I woke up this morning thinking that this may in fact be the most important and challenging Easter message I have ever been tasked or honored to give. I am reminded what the great preacher Thomas Long once said. He said, to use the popular phrase, a church is a hospital for sinners, is fine, but it is much more than that. A church is a community of faith where people come to offer their commitment, their energy, their intelligence for the mission of Jesus Christ. The gospel beckons Come unto me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens. But it also says that disciples of Jesus are called to take up their cross and follow me. 
we, you and I, the world that we live in, we are all carrying the cross of pandemic. It may take us years to understand and embrace what it has truly meant to carry this cross. And while the pain of carrying it right now is, it's hard. It's not good. Perhaps the understanding and the learnings that we gain from this experience in bearing this cross, we will finally see the goodness. This Holy Week is, is far different from any that I've ever experienced as a pastor and shepherd of a, of a small flock in, in southeast Georgia. But it has reminded me of all the pain and suffering and death in the world that has been caused by our failure to love one another. Our fear of love. Our inability to receive it. Our choice of greed and oppression over and against it and against community. The cross is also a reminder that when we choose to love, rather than to be numb to our fear, we risk pain. In so many ways, we, all of us, we are Christ. We are suffering injustice. We are the women, confused and weeping at the foot of the cross. But here's the beauty of this day. Here's the beauty of this day and every day, it, and it is that God gives us resurrection. The cross was the result of human brokenness, but God is willing to go to that awful place, Golgotha. God is willing to go there to teach us how to love, to show us that death does, doesn't have the last word. That we, you and I, can become something new. Have you ever thought in the last few weeks, have you ever thought that this dreaded global nightmare could possibly be a chance uh, to consider what boundary lies between us and the holy? I have seen what I call some pretty bad theology on the internet and in other places in the last few weeks. I've seen and I've read and I've heard that God is punishing us, that God is the author of our pain and ultimately our alienation. As your shepherd, I want you to know that I don't believe any of that, not for a second. But what I do believe is that there is a message here, and I believe it's in that still, small voice. And that message, that message, I think, is this. God is calling us to become closer and closer to one another and closer to his divine presence. On this Easter Sunday, let me ask you, what does this pandemic, what does it reveal about our brokenness and our potential for resurrection? For me, this sabbatical, this time of uh, confinement, this time of uh, isolation and solitude reminds me that as the world has become a, a little more silent, I am ever so reminded that I have often become so busy with worldly things, distractions, the lead us not into temptations, that I have so often failed to hear that still, small voice. That voice that calls me 
and I believe you as well, to do something new. This time of physical distancing, and I call it physical distancing because that's what it is. My friend Bob Kerr says, you know, Rick, that's a wrong term. We should, we should say physical distancing instead of social distancing because we're, we're now more socially connected than we've ever been before. And so in this time of being socially connected with you, I want to say it probably poses another question, at least the question that is posed to me this week is this. How can I submerge myself into the depths, the very depths of God's amazing presence even more so? How can I go deeper, deeper than, than I've ever gone before? In this deeper immersion and resurrection experience, what I hope that we all will find is this. Disease, pain, despair, and even death. It has no boundaries on this planet. We are interconnected by our suffering. What happens to one person, one community, one nation, impacts the other, no matter how far we are away from them. We mourn together, we act together, we rejoice together, we succeed together, and yes, we fail together. Here's where we have not failed in the past few weeks. Pandemic has also revealed the beauty of humanity and of life itself. Fabric is being sewn all over the world for face masks. Healthcare workers, doctors and, and nurses and, and medical staff are being applauded. Errands are being run for the elderly. Soup is being dropped off on doorsteps. And speaking of doorsteps, Kathy and I were the recipients of a most beautiful, beautiful note written by a neighbor just yesterday. And our churches, our communities of faith, look what we're doing. We're doing something new for many of us. Finding new platforms for what is bound to be not a failing ministry but a growing and perhaps in some ways, who knows, a more relevant ministry. In all of this, in acts of everyday kindness and sacrifices, big and small, we will come through this. We will come through this more spiritually grounded, more compassionate, <laughs> and I'm convinced a lot more creative. And I want to add to that, more resolved. More resolved to live together peacefully and with justice. This in and of itself, my friends, is resurrection. God did not give us the cross. God gave us resurrection. Death and suffering are a part of this broken world that God seeks to heal. And my good friend and liturgist today has reminded me over and over again, God is still God. God is always in the response, my friends. God is always in the response of the trials and the despair, the brokenness, and yes, even even the death that we are facing every time we turn on the news. God is with us. God is with us on this journey. And he's trying to teach us like he does every day how to truly live. There is a 
There is a still, small voice still speaking to us. And it is speaking to us this morning. On this day of resurrection, it is speaking to us from an empty tomb. The haunting question is this. Are we listening? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind blow at your back. May the rain fall softly on your field. May the sun shine warmly on your face. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand.